So you're trying to grow your woodworking business and you're running into challenges. Welcome to it. I'm gonna tell you today the number one thing that's stopping you from growing your woodworking business. Let's dive in. All right, well, welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Zach Vaught. I'm your host. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure you go check out the Handmade Business Secrets podcast anywhere that you listen to podcasts and vice versa. And so, so glad that you're here. By the way, if you're trying to grow your woodworking business and you haven't subscribed to this page yet, just go ahead and do it because we're the single greatest place that I've found to help with woodworking business principles and also mindset principles. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what is the number one thing that's stopping you from growing your woodworking business at the moment, okay? So what we find is that to run a successful business, you have to have a large skill set. Imagine that we have a whiskey barrel that's standing up and we have each of the slats, I can't think of what they're called, on this whiskey barrel, but one of these slats is half as tall as the others. Well, when you start to fill that barrel up with whiskey, it's gonna get to the lowest slat and it's gonna start overflowing. You're gonna have a problem. You're not gonna be able to contain the opportunity that's presented to the barrel, right? But as soon as we bring that up, right, now we can take on a lot more. So we have to identify the weak areas inside of our business model. And for most of you guys that are just starting out, trying to grow past five to $10,000 per month, the single greatest thing from stopping you from growing in your woodworking business are your limiting beliefs. It's the way that you think. Now, you're all like, oh my gosh, here we go. Frilly nilly Zach hitting us with the mindset. Moo ju 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 foo foo. <laughs> But I'm gonna give you today the top five limiting beliefs that I see over and over and over and over and over again from woodworking business owners as they're first getting started. Number one, first limiting belief that I see, I don't wanna grow too big. Well, I don't wanna take on too many sales. Well, I don't wanna get too busy. I see people say this all the time. It's literally like people that don't work out at all and then they say, well, I don't want, I don't go to the gym because I don't wanna get too big. You know, I don't wanna get too muscular. It's like, dude, you're literally so not in danger of getting too big. People say this, but when you start feeling like you're getting too busy, you can stop taking on new orders. If you're going to the gym and you're getting too big, you can stop working out so much, right? Like this is a limiting belief that I hear people say all the time. And guys, this was what I had too. I started with this limiting belief, like, oh, I don't wanna get too busy. I don't know how to manage it all. I'm afraid that it's gonna grow and it's gonna get outside of my control. Listen, you would rather be too busy than not busy enough. I'll preach this till the cows come home. You would rather be too busy. You'd rather be too big than not busy enough. The worst thing for a business is to not have any sales, to not have any cash flow. You would rather have people throwing their money at you and you having to try to figure out how to fulfill on those promises as opposed to wondering where your next client's gonna come from. And for some of you guys, that's where you're at. You don't know where your next client's gonna come from. And if that's you, you need to join the Woodworking Business Accelerator program. We have a link in the description below. You should check it out. Okay, so number two, if I did grow, my garage couldn't handle it. You know, I'm just working out of my garage. Man, I can only do like an order a week. I can't grow past this. Well, do you want to grow? Yes or no? So you got to ask yourself that question. Okay, do I want to grow? Do I want to increase my income? Do I want to increase my team? What do I want my vision to be for my business? Well, if you want to grow a big business, you can't stay in your garage forever, right? So you got to start growing your sales, extending your lead times and adding a backlog. And then you got to take that leap and go get your first commercial space. And guys, you can do this. We teach people how to do this all the time inside of the Woodworking Business Accelerator program. Okay. You can do this. Number three is I can't afford to hire anybody. I got to do this all myself. Now you may be out there and you may legit not be able to afford to hire somebody, but you don't just have one of these limiting beliefs. A lot of times you have multiples of these limiting beliefs. And so if you're saying, well, I can't afford to hire anybody, that's probably because you also have the belief, well, I just don't want to get too big. I couldn't, my garage can't handle this, right? So you've got to figure out how to start destroying these limiting beliefs so that you can actually start making progress in your business, okay? You can start actually going for it and trying and doing it. Guys, one of the best quotes that I ever heard is from a mentor of mine. He's an elder at our church. I love him so much. His name's Bill Lecky. He told me, it's the best thing he's ever said to me. I was talking about all my grandiose plans, all these things I wanted to do. And he said, most people would rather keep a dream that can't fail than they would rather trade it in for an opportunity that could fail. So for most of you guys out there, what that means is that you love the idea of being able to sit in bed at night and think about what it could be. And you live your life through this theoretical place of what your business could become. But when it comes to taking action, you're afraid to take action because then you think, what if I try my best and I fail? 
What if I chase after my dreams and I don't win and I lose everything or I have to go back and get another job or, or we lose the house or we lose the cars, right? And you start playing all these things in your mind. Most people would rather just fantasize about what could be as opposed to trade it in and go chase it. Go try to make it happen. Then, even if you do fail, you can say, you know what? I gave my best. I did the best that I could. I very rarely see businesses fail when people truly do the best that they can. But number three, I can't afford to hire anyone. Guys, if you're trying to grow, you need to hire as you go. You need to get people doing the lower level tasks first. In my opinion, you need to have people assembling chairs, sanding, staining, doing the simple stuff, right? That could be even like answering your emails or updating QuickBooks, right? Whatever that might be. That's number three. Number four, and I just talked about this a little bit. This is a limiting belief that a lot of people have. I can't afford to fail. Now, as we talk about failing, there is big picture failing where it's like, I've gone bankrupt, I've lost everything, my wife left me, my kids left me, my dog left me, truck broke down on the side of the road, this has turned into a country song. I'm living in a van down by the river, okay? This is where everything has gone wrong, but then there's also micro failure. There's daily failure. There's feeling like a failure. Most of you guys, the reason that you are more likely to fail big picture is because you are so afraid of failing in the small, failing in the micro, failing at the small thing things on a daily basis or feeling like a failure. This is one of the things that I'm like adamant about installing in my children and the people that I teach is that you have to know it's a process. You have to know that you're not gonna get it right the first time. You have to know and you have to be okay with the fact that you don't have all the answers and that you can't expect yourself to. Guys, you've gotta get out there and you've gotta start making things happen and you will learn as you go. Literally, entrepreneurship is jumping off of a cliff and building the airplane on the way down. You don't get to have it all figured out before you jump off the cliff. You gotta jump and you gotta figure it out as you go. Now don't be stupid or don't be reckless, but you got to understand that you can't afford not to fail. Failure is a part of the equation. Anybody successful will tell you the same thing, okay? Now number five, this one might be my favorite, and it's this, I don't need a mentor, I can figure it out. I spent three years in my business going nowhere fast, living the same year over again and again and again, not growing my business, not developing as a person, nothing was happening. I literally from 2017 to 2020 looked like the same year every year. That's frustrating, guys. I mean, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this right now and you feel like you've been replaying the same year for the last two, three, four, five, ten 10 years, guys, Get a mentor, get somebody that can teach you, get somebody that can help you, that can show you what you don't know. They can point out these limiting beliefs that you don't even see in yourself. Because guys, I even still have limiting beliefs, have things that hold me back. And so if you are trying to grow your woodworking business, whether it's me in the Woodworking Business Accelerator program or it's somebody else, you need to get a mentor. You need to have somebody that can call out your blind spots, that can challenge you, that can encourage you, that can remind you of what things you need to get done this week and you need to hammer those things out. You need to make sure that it happens. It's a priority. You need to have actionable items, actionable steps from your mentor that you're hammering out, you're knocking stuff out. Guys, I've spent probably $50,000 in the last three or four years on mentors. I've spent a lot of money on mentors to learn what I didn't know and to implement things that I didn't currently have figured out. And these things improved my skill set, helped me grow at a rapid pace, and my income rapidly grew as a result of this. Guys, the money that I put into mentors or programs, the money that I've invested into those things, they probably paid me back six, eight, tenfold since then. So get a mentor, join a program, find the people that are doing what you want to do and go get on their hip pocket, figure out how to have them in your ear on a consistent basis. So I'm not saying it's got to be me. I prefer that it was me, but you need to have a mentor. So if you're looking for somebody to help guide you, help you start, scale, and even sell a woodworking business, that's me. That's what I've done in the last seven years. I started my garage at $5,000 a month or less, not really knowing what I was doing. I failed and then I developed my brand, developed my business to where in 2023, we did over $900,000 in top line revenue and I sold that business, okay? All the while I did that while not being involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. I'm a full-time pastor and I just grew a team that ran that business for me, okay? So that's the number one thing. Thing that's stopping you from growing your woodworking business. It's your limiting beliefs. And I gave you the top five. There's more. There's a whole lot more. But let me know if this spoke to you in the comment section below. If it did, man, I would love to connect with you there in the comments. And if you have not liked or subscribed, make sure that you do that. So with that being said, guys, love you. Appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one.